Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've got an exciting one for you today because today we are playing with Sphero 2.0. Now you know me, normally I would take this box and kind of open it up a little bit and chuck it away because I'm not really a huge fan of unboxings when really all that you have in the box is like a charger and a cable, but Sphero actually does come with a couple really cool accessories. Sliding open the box, you see that Sphero is positioned front and center. Your eye is instantly drawn to this cute little orb of a robot. Inside the box, we've got the actual Sphero Sphere robot, a little cradle stand, a pair of ramps, which we'll get into in just a bit, and an inductive charger. And we'll talk about why we have have a wireless charger a little while later. And there's also like a little manual booklet thing, but now that we have everything out of the box, we can get rid of the box. So yes, this is Sphero. Sphero is about the size of a baseball. And the best way that I could describe Sphero as a robot is if you were to take a little miniature hamster and train it how to ride a Segway and then lock it in a waterproof ball, and then you could teach it how to do tricks that would be Sphero. Sphero 2.0 is twice as fast as the original Sphero robot and is also brighter. So the LEDs on board are, are more customizable. They're brighter, they're easier to see. Um, so much so that as I'm shooting video with my camera, it starts to even clip um, the highlights of my video, uh, which is really exciting because as you're playing with a bunch of different Spheros, if you have friends with Sphero, uh, you really wanna make sure that you can keep an eye on which spherical robot is yours. Sphero is extremely durable. The folks at Orbotics claim that they've dropped Sphero from waist height onto concrete over 30 times, just to make sure that Sphero will survive normal bumps and bruises in play. And that's very much appreciated because for as much as I love radio control toys like helicopters and cars and quadcopters, I'm actually one of the worst pilots that you could have for these types of toys. So knowing that Sphero will survive a random trip down the stairs or hop off a curb, it actually makes me feel a lot safer playing with it. Once you've driven your Sphero through a bunch of challenging environments and through ground and grass and carpet and dusty and muddy and gross places, uh, Sphero is also waterproof. Cleaning Sphero is totally easy. You can just run them under the tap in your sink. But you know me, when someone claims that a device is waterproof, it's not enough that I just rinse it in water. I wanna see what happens when we submerge Sphero. Not only can you dunk Sphero in water and rinse Sphero in water, but Sphero can swim. So this is Sphero driving around in my hot tub and he is powerful enough to fight the jets in my apartment complex's hot tub. Look at little Sphero swim. Swim, Sphero, swim. Now I get really silly about playing with stuff like that. You know, when we claim a gadget's waterproof or durable or shock resistant or something like that. But I get really excited about it though because you know it really does make a gadget all ages. You know, adults can be rough on gadgets and technology. Kids are really rough on gadgets and technology. And so when you invest in a little robot guy and they claim that it can do all of these cool things and when you hand it to a child, you wanna make sure that the child doesn't break it in the first outing. You know, how, how awful is that whenever you give a child a piece of tech and they destroy it the very first time they use it? You know, they, they really haven't learned how to take care of, you know, nicer pieces of technology. So the fact that Sphero has a pretty high survivability rating means that you feel a lot better about letting kids play with this kind of tech. The folks at Orbotics have done a really good job of giving Sphero its own unique personality really do start to personify with it the second you start playing with it. From waking Sphero up, to picking a color for Sphero, to pairing Sphero with your smartphone, charging Sphero, playing with Sphero. Uh, he starts to take on, I, I, mean, I even refer to him with a gender. He, for whatever reason, my Sphero is a him. You want to protect Sphero. When you play games of Sphero, you want Sphero to do well. It's really funny how we personify these things. And as humans, we, we take these inanimate objects and we turn them into pets. So Sphero uses a series of gyroscopes and sensors to maintain balance and stability on almost any angle. And the new, more powerful motors that they've put into Sphero means that he can do things like climb hills and jump ramps, which is really exciting. When Sphero is going full clip, you're actually having to walk at a pretty brisk pace to keep up with Sphero. Sphero is very fast now, and that really ups the level of what you can do to play with Sphero. So to wake Sphero up, you just deliver a quick double tap. Ah, there we go. Now when I hold him up to the mic, you can hear the angry little gerbil inside. <laughs> and 
and and that's the the internal robotic mechanisms, all those gyros and wheels that that kind of help keep Sphero balanced and stable are now compensating for my hand movements here. So watching pets interact with Sphero is kind of a trip. I got to watch a cat play with Sphero and I don't think the cat really enjoyed having a robotic companion. But funnily enough, my blind Sharpay really took to Sphero. And uh, when I rolled him into his face, uh, my, my boy Bigelow just started licking him. So apologies to the folks at Orbital, but my dog totally made out with your robot. And this is another little cool thing about how you own Sphero is that each Sphero has a three color combination, which sort of becomes the Sphero's name. So when I go to pair Sphero on my phone, this Sphero is Sphero RGW for red, green, white. And other Spheros will flash different colors when it's waiting for a phone or a tablet to pair with it. Again, it's, it's all about making this a unique device for you. And once you've gone through the pairing process, then you can name your Sphero, become part of the Sphero Club. It's all really personalized. Now, if I do have a criticism about using Sphero, especially with an Android device, is that the pairing process can be a little tedious. Every single time the Sphero app gets shut off, you have to go through repairing Sphero with your phone Sphero app every single time. So even though this is connected to my phone via Bluetooth, the app also needs to go back through a reconnection process, which takes a little time. And especially like with me, where my phone is constantly on and off and on and off and on and off. Um, unless I know I'm gonna be sitting and playing with Sphero for a while, that can be a little tedious. It can be a little time consuming. It's doing a little dance for me just to make sure that I'm hooked up to the right Sphero. And then you go through a calibration to make sure that Sphero points towards you. The app is extremely well laid out. You've got speed controls. If you want to maneuver Sphero a little slower, there's a little turtle icon you can move towards. There's even a turbo button for when you really want to blast Sphero off, if you want him to take a ramp and really go flying. You've got color changing options so that you can uh, really personalize what color your Sphero is while you're playing, especially if other people have Spheros, you want to be able to tell them apart. Um, it's kind of hard to see on this camera angle, but you can maybe see that I'm in real time swapping the colors on my Sphero right now. Thankfully, the folks at Orbotics have included multiple methods for controlling Sphero. I am not good at tilt, you know, moving a device around to control another device. For whatever reason, that just doesn't work in my brain. But they have also installed just a regular joystick rocker switch that you can use on your phone to control Sphero. Yeah, angry little gerbil, do it. <laughs> and it really helps me sort of navigate Sphero much more easily. For whatever reason, that makes more sense. I, I guess just growing up with a Nintendo makes me more uh, more able to think in D-pad terms than in tilt-wobble terms. And so even though this makes noise just because of the servos and motors on board, the app actually makes noises too to help further personify your Sphero. So if your Sphero goes tearing off and hits a wall, you get these little ouch noises to let you know that you've collided with something. Like if Sphero has left your field of view or your site, um, you'll at least know that you crashed into something. Just a really cool little aspect to add to make sure that you and your Sphero are totally BFF. And if you thought that Sphero was just a roving robot, you would be sorely mistaken. In addition to the basic control app, which lets you navigate Sphero and drive Sphero around, there are also already 20 different apps on the iOS and Google Play app stores ready to do different things and have different kinds of fun with Sphero. One of the most impressive is a zombie augmented reality game, which will use the camera in your phone or tablet to survey your the scene around you. So if you're moving around and you're looking at your living room floor, Sphero will navigate within where you're focusing the camera on and then little zombies will pop up out of your carpet or out of the ground on your screen that Sphero will then drive over and shoot flamethrower flames at so you can kill zombies in your living room. That is impressively well done. It's actually for a ro rolling spherical robot toy, this is probably one of the best augmented reality apps I've ever played with. There are also a number of really fun party games, things like Color Grab. The screen will show you what color Sphero is going to turn. And once Sphero turns that color, you've got to grab it as quickly as possible to get as many points as you can. You can have up to six players, which is pretty cool. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, I missed it. I'm trying to do this, so I got zero points on that round. Okay, we're gonna do another. Yeah, 400 points. Okay, good, good. We're gonna do another, we're gonna do another. I'm just playing by myself here and this is still a stupid amount of fun. Yeah, all right, 300 points, good. Good, 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 all right. 
This is this is like color grab solitaire here. All right, we're gonna do another. We're gonna do another. All right, excellent. And I beat myself. Yay! I'm both the winner and the loser. And one other cool app application of Sphero is because of all the sensors on board and the fact that this is constantly tracking its own movement and rotation and that it's paired to your phone over a wireless connection is you can use Sphero as an app control element. So apps that are coded for it like Nyan Cat Space Party, you hold Sphero and you navigate a ship on screen by moving Sphero back and forth. By rolling Sphero around in your hands, you can control something on your screen, which is just, again, it's a very novel application, and it really speaks to how open the developing environment is for Sphero. Now, as I said before, I'm not a very good pilot when it comes to roving robots and RC cars and helicopters, but Sphero has a really satisfying learning curve. It's a little tricky at first, just getting Sphero up and running and sort of anticipating where it's gonna go. And then of course I have that problem where I freak out and like my thumb leaves the screen and Sphero just goes tearing off in a direction I wasn't expecting. But once you start to get the hang of it, it has a, a very unique feel to its operation. It, it really does respond very, very quickly. And it's, it's a very navigatable kind of device. You can get very accurate, very fast using Sphero. And, and only setting up the ramps for the first time, it only took me two or three passes around the ramps to get a feel for how I can hit that ramp and really get Sphero jumping. Okay, total miss. Almost. Woohoo! And so even doing something as silly as just navigating Sphero around my living room floor is a surprisingly satisfying endeavor. The connection between Sphero and your phone is pretty much just standard, normal Bluetooth operating procedures. Um, they uh, estimate around a 30 meter range, which is the upper limits of Bluetooth. Um, I haven't really had need to test it far beyond that. Sphero works really well and works well enough when you don't even have direct line of sight. So when Sphero rounds a corner, you better go and get it because Sphero is gonna keep going. Considering everything that's going on inside Sphero, and that Sphero uses a wireless connection to communicate with its controller, uh, battery life is surprisingly impressive. It takes about three hours to charge up Sphero, and for that three hour charge time in the induction charger, you get about an hour of runtime, which is pretty sweet. Even my favorite quadcopters and RC helicopters, usually we measure runtime in tens of minutes, if that. So it's totally conceivable that you could get a group of people together with a couple Spheros, and as long as those Spheros are fully charged, you could have a lot of fun with them in terms of time. The fun is already a high level of fun, but it's also a sustainable fun because they run for so long, if that makes sense. Thankfully, Sphero is very well accessorized out of the box. I mean, it comes with all this stuff, like a little little cradle guy that you can put Sphero in and ramps that you can jump up and down. Uh, but there is also one accessory. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to play with it. Uh, they didn't send me one to review, but Sphero also has some armor that he can wear. Uh, they call it the nubby cover. That gives Sphero a rubberized shell, not necessarily to protect Sphero, but to give Sphero better traction on land and better swimmability when in water. So not only Sphero on its own is pretty navigatable in water, even in my apartment hot tub, um, you can make Sphero even more aquatic or more of an off-road vehicle by putting on this protective shell. So just driving Sphero around for me is enough. I'm a sucker for little robotic critter things, RC cars, helicopters, even though I suck at playing with them, including other apps and games with Sphero just takes it to a whole nother level. And the fact that Sphero seems to be the figure point for some of the best augmented reality that I've seen on our mobile devices yet. Built into the Sphero app is Macro Lab, which allows you to program macros. For those of you who don't know, macros are a set of commands that you can give a, an electronic device. People usually bitch about them because gamers like to use macros to make themselves better at playing games without actually having to play the game. You know who you are. Well, you can also build series of commands for Sphero as well. If you want to, you can program Sphero to be a, a, a roaming sentry all the way around your home or to navigate certain tricky environments or to do cool things that I can't even imagine because people haven't done them yet and I'm not that creative. In addition to that, Sphero can also be programmed using Orb Basic, which is a version of Basic built for orbs or spheres or Sphero specifically. And the folks at Orbotics are also working on a version of Ruby for Sphero. So you can teach your kids how to program in Ruby 
in basic or just in logical command steps using Sphera. It's a fascinating way to release a product like this. We're really used to robots that can do a couple cool things, but then hackers have to get in there and really rip open the guts of the software to expand on the functionality of what was delivered to us at retail. The folks at Arbotics are not only encouraging people to engage in sort of tinkering with the software brains and guts of this device, they're wholeheartedly encouraging people to go out there and flesh out an entire ecosystem of software apps and games and products all built around a robot, which is just a ball. Already, there are so many cool things that you can do with Sphero, and we haven't even begun to see what people are going to start doing with Sphero 2.0. Sphero 2.0 is going to retail at the same price point as the original Sphero, around $130. And for that price point, this is an amazing piece of technology which is so much fun to play with and has so many possibilities to get kids interested in technology, to get kids working on technology, hands-on with technology. I really do enjoy this. It's so much fun to play with. It's It's got so much potential. I can't wait to see what apps people develop for it. And it's got that added benefit, just that little spark of imagination that you could hand this to somebody. I, I, a software developer, a hacker, a kid, and you could really watch what they might do to it. You know, that that alone is enough imagination and fun for me to say that this is worth putting on your radar. This is right up my alley. And I really think a lot of you folks out there are really going to enjoy playing with this kind of technology, this kind of toy. And I'm also gonna be doing a follow-up video, uh, taking a closer look at all the different apps that you can use with Sphero. But until that time, I'm Juan, this is Firo. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next review.